In this video, we will cover two topics from Unit 3 about Earth's interior. Remember that the essential questions for this unit are what process inside of the Earth causes changes to Earth's surface, and also how can we predict changes to Earth's surface based on the movements in the interior of Earth. In this video, we won't really get into the second essential question for this unit, but we'll instead focus on the first one. The objectives of this video are to understand the relationship between heat and volume, and then what the relationship between volume and density are. You will then later learn about how density affects the movements inside of the Earth, but for this lesson, we're gonna focus on what heat, volume, and density have to do with one another. As a reminder before we start the video, you should have answered the first three questions in your homework assignment, which ask you to think about what could make an object sink or float, as well as coming up with some examples of objects that you can think of that sink or float in water. If you haven't done so already, please pause the video here and answer those questions. If you have answered those questions, please continue watching. Now first, it's important to remember that everything we're talking about in this unit happens in the interior of Earth. So again, what I mean by that is that we live on the crust of Earth, which is shown by this blue line here. What we are going to be talking about today is a process that actually happens inside of the Earth's mantle. We're going to start off by explaining how objects either sink or float. And to do this, I'm going to use a demonstration that many of you have seen before with some green colored water and oil. I'm going to start off by placing just a little bit of oil on top of the water, and I'd like you to write down your observations of what happens to the oil. Again, I'm just using a small amount of oil in this first demonstration. Your observation should have focus on whether or not the oil sinks or floats. So you can see pretty clearly here that in this demonstration, the small amount of oil is floating on top of the large amount of water. But what will happen if I use instead a large amount of oil and a small amount of water? Will it continue to sink or float? So this time I have a small amount of water and I'm going to use a large amount of oil. And what you should see is that no matter what amount of oil I use, the oil continues to float on top. This happens because of something called density. We will learn more in detail later about what density is, but density is a measure of how many molecules are packed into a certain space. So if you think back to fifth grade, we learned that mass is the measure of the amount of molecules inside of an object, and volume is a measure that says how much space the object takes up. So density is a way of measuring how many molecules are packed in to a certain space, or how much mass is inside of a volume. I can illustrate this up here. For example, if something is very dense or denser, it would have more molecules packed into a space, if this is my space, then something that is less dense, which would have fewer molecules packed into that space. So what we can decide from this demonstration is that because the water sank, it had something to do with the water's density. Things that are more dense or denser will sink. Things that are less dense, no matter how much there is of it, will float. So in our example up here, 
this object is denser, which means that it could sink. This object is less dense, which means that it could float. Please take a minute now to decide which objects on your worksheet will sink or float, or which objects are denser or less dense. Now we're gonna move on to the second part of this video, which is explaining the relationship between heat and density. So if you remember back to fifth grade, you know that volume, again, is the amount of space that an object takes up. Something with a small volume takes up a little space. Something with a large volume takes up a lot of space. We can also think about the phase change here we learned in fifth grade. My hands represented molecules, and the distance apart that my hands were in that phase change chair represented how much volume those molecules took up. So for example, when I went solid, melting, liquid, evaporating, gas, my hands were getting further apart, meaning that as you move from a solid to a liquid to a gas, you are increasing your volume. This also means that as I move from a solid to a liquid to a gas, I'm adding heat. So when I add heat to an object, its volume increases. What this could look like in our molecules is that we have a volume with molecules inside of it. As I add some heat to this object, its volume can increase. But the molecules stay the same. So there are still the same number of molecules. But now, all of a sudden, these molecules are more spread out. So when I add heat to an object, its molecules become more spread out. If they're more spread out, they can become less dense. Remember, objects that are dense are packed in together objects that are less dense are more spread out. So by adding heat, I went from a denser object to a less dense object. So to summarize, the relationships that we learned today are that density is a measure of the amount of molecules packed into a certain space. If you add heat to those molecules, they will begin to spread out and become less dense. When things are less dense, they are more likely to float. When objects are denser, they are more likely to sink.